Hello and welcome back to the Dice Chain. I'm your host, Judge Logan. Today we're going to be discussing the ironically malign subject of alignment. Alignment is something that's been around since the beginning of TTRPGs themselves. And just as old as alignment is the argument of how alignment works. Now, to be fair, not everything in the idea of alignment is all that contentious. Most players know the difference between what is good and what is evil. Th those, are, those are simple concepts. Yes, you will get people playing the devil's advocate arguing that, oh, this isn't evil if I believe that I'm doing good, or I'm doing evil for good. But, but when it comes down to it, doing something that harms someone else for no one's benefit other than your own is evil. Doing something that helps others even though you gain nothing from it is good and there's a lot of in between that's gray area there are plenty of good things that harm there are plenty of bad things that can help but we're not here to talk about good and evil we're here to talk about law versus chaos the alignment system of dungeon crawl classics is based off of the alignment system from the original dnd yes back in the beginning gary gygax didn't bother with all of these which ones are good which ones are evil there was law and there was chaos the only issue there is that a lot of people had to argue over what counted as law, what counted as chaotic. And even though most of that's up for interpretation, which is kind of the point, it is also a well-established fact that your table needs to have their own personal idea of what those things mean. Now, I'm not the only person who's ever covered this subject. Matthew Coville of MCDM Productions did a phenomenal video of Law vs. Chaos. I'm hoping that I'm not going to reiterate any of his points because his video is very well made and I really do think people should watch it. That said, his version of Law vs. Chaos is, is a lot of what inspired my version of Law vs. Chaos. Because his version is inspired from the same place that mine is, which is Appendix N. Now, by no means do I expect you to take the versions that I'm going to explain and, and have those as the definitive, this is what law is, this is what chaos is. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to kind of clear up ideas. I'm here to give you my personal opinion and how I use law and chaos. And I'm hopefully here to inspire you to use law and chaos in a way that you enjoy. Because here on the Dice Chain, I, Judge Logan, help you get into the weird, wild, and gonzo worlds of Dungeon Crawl Classics. Let's get into it. So in Dungeon Crawl Classics, there are exactly three alignments. Law, Chaos, and Neutrality. So a good example of the misconceptions that a lot of people have with Law and Chaos can be viewed in the movie The Gamers 2, Darkness Rising. A movie that had quite a few Goodman Games products. Now, I saw this film before I ever started playing TTRPGs. It's one of the reasons that I needed to find a D&D group when I was in college. And not only is it a very funny, very relatable watch, but also it does an excellent job at really showing some of these misconceptions, as I stated earlier, that a lot of people have with alignment. Two of our main characters, Lodge, who is the DM of the group, and Gary, who is one of the players, have quite a few back and forths about what is and isn't chaotic. And the thing that makes both of these perfect examples is that the idea of what is law and what is chaos are really driven to their extremes by the players that these two have in the game. Gary plays a chaotic neutral wild mage. Gary's understanding of what is chaotic neutral is incredibly skewed and very disruptive. Right in the West. It's Gary's opinion that randomly killing and just doing basic murder hobo stuff is how you play a chaotic character. I'm just playing my alignment. And it it is an option, but it's not a good one. Now, by all means, if your group and your GM are happy with this type of play, go for it. You know, I'm not here to dictate how you have fun. I'm just here to explain that that isn't the only explanation for chaos. It is a very chaotic explanation, I'll grant you that. But it, it's so skewed, like the entire point and the comedy that comes from Gary's character is how ridiculously over the top his idea of chaos is. And on the exact opposite side of this same coin, Lodge's DMPC, Sir Osric, is just as bad at figuring out what exactly law is. It's his alignment. Yeah, they're lawful stupid. Sir Osric is the epitome of a Boy Scout character. Somebody that follows all laws to the T, nothing can be different. Ah, oh, great, a babysitter. What? You have got to be kidding me. And to be fair, this is kind of how lawful good worked in third edition, especially for paladins. But a lot of the over-the-top antics and a lot of how Lodge 
handled situations in a lawful manner, again, is a bit over the top and is where the comedy comes from. Now, I loved this movie. Uh, again, I watched it before I ever started playing TTRPGs. I've seen this film so many times. But I have friends who have seen it and picked up bad habits from it. I know GMs who watched it and saw Lodge and Sir Osric and thought that's how all lawful characters should act. And I have friends that saw Gary and thought that's exactly how all chaotic characters should act. And again, if that's how you want to do it and your party's good with that, your GM's good with that, that's fine. But th there are better ways to do it. It's, it's supposed to be funny. It's not supposed to be what you emulate. But I'm not here to just talk about this film. As good as the movie is, it's not even technically the right system. Third edition can be easily converted into DCC, but it is not DCC. One of my favorite ways to explain each of these three alignments to new players is with the core demi-human races. And I can explain it through something that nearly anyone who's ever played a TTRPG or is interested in TTRPGs probably is familiar with, because I can use the depictions of those races in the Lord of the Rings movies to explain DCC's alignment system. An incredibly common misconception is that law means good and chaos means evil. These things aren't true. There is good in law, but there's also evil in law. There's good in chaos alongside the evil in chaos. So even though there are plenty of modules that kind of codify one as good and one as evil, that's not exactly how it works. If that's how you want it to work, that's completely up to you. There's no issue there. I have players and that's the first place that their mind goes is that, well, this one's the bad one and this one's obviously the good one. And, and that's just not true. So let's start with the most basic one, law. Law is easily described as order, structure, tradition. Dwarves, it's dwarves. Tolkien's dwarves are driven by traditions, by structures. They do things because this is how they do things. This is how they've always done things. Dwarves are most comfortable in a place that is structured, is lawful. You look at dwarven societies, they are hewn from stone. They literally take the earth and craft it into what they want it to be. Dwarves are law, dwarves are order. Now jumping onto the opposite end of the spectrum, the thing that seems like it should be the most confusing, but is just as simple, chaos. Chaos is embodied by Tolkien's elves. Let's really compare how the elves work versus how the dwarves work. The dwarves both throughout Peter Jackson's films and throughout the books have a structure that is very similar to how we in our world run things. The dwarves have kings and generals. They believe that a bloodline is part of what makes a person a leader. These are concepts from a lawful society. But then we jump over to the elves and it doesn't quite work the same way. Yes, they have kings, but it doesn't have the same sort of structure, if that makes sense. The elves, as far as we can really tell, especially in the films, Mostly just go off of who is the best one for the job. Elrond and Galadriel have been around for a long time. They're very wise, and thus they're good leaders. You could directly compare how leaders are chosen in elven society to how orcs in the 40k society would pick a leader. The strongest one leads, the wisest one leads. That's not how structure works in the real world. Dwarven society runs on structure and order, and elven society just doesn't. If we need to go beyond that, look at the comparison of their cities. Dwarven cities are built, they're structured, they are designed to look like cities. Elven cities are often built alongside the trees, alongside the nature, because nature is the ultimate chaos. Nature cares not for what you have built, Nature doesn't care what you have done. It's going to grow where it grows. Wherever it grows is always random. The chaotic forces of our world can be attributed to nature. Likewise, law doesn't care where nature is. Law is going to do what law wants to do, and no chaotic nature is going to stop it. And you can now see, this is a chaotic society, this is a lawful society, but they're both good societies in that world. Now to explain neutrality, let's jump straight to the Hobbits. The Hobbits are shown as a lawful society in the DCC handbook. But when we look at the Hobbits of Tolkien, it really does seem like they're somewhere in the middle. Halflings build societies, halflings have laws and order. They're fairly prim and proper individuals, 
especially in Hobbiton. But at the same time, they build many of their structures along with nature. The Hobbits throughout the films and throughout the books have just as much respect for the immense amount of time put into dwarven cities as they do for the natural world and the nature-like structure of elven society. When it comes to the primordial forces of law and chaos, halflings are neutral. They don't care which side's winning, as long as they can find a good meal. That's a straight up mood, if I'm being honest. Now again, if you want to make law and chaos just your de facto good and evil, that's fine. But I want to bring about this idea, this, this, this concept that law and chaos should be primordial forces that are always at one another's throats. Because to me, that's the most fun. What I'm really getting at here, and what I'm attempting to explain and maybe rambling too much, is that alignment is something that you should use to aid your world and aid your characters as a player or as a judge. But it's not something you should use to define them. Going back to the gamers, Osric's main problem is that law is his definition. Law is his entire personality. Very funny in a movie, not always as funny when you're playing that character or playing with that character on a regular basis. Same with Chaos. Gary's biggest issue is that Chaos is his character's whole personality. And that's just not how it was supposed to be. Your alignment should describe what your character believes, not who your character is. Your character should never be beholden to that one specific thing. One more literary example is Fafford and the Grey Mouser. Fafford and the Grey Mouser are two characters from the works of Fritz Leiber. Fafford and the Grey Mouser exist in the phenomenally grey world of Netwan. You may or may not be familiar with Lankmar, a uh, literal setting of DCC. That's because these phenomenal books are a huge inspiration for DCC. The reason I'm saving Fafford and the Grey Mouser for the end of this video is because they are easily the best example of how law and chaos shouldn't define your character, they should just be how they believe, and how putting your characters in good and evil specifically is more boring than leaving them a little gray. Now Fafford and the Grey Mouser are heroes. They are the main characters of the book series. But that doesn't mean that everything they do is necessarily good. Fafford and the Grey Mouser regularly involve themselves in heists and stealing, in murders and affairs. Each of them are more worried about finding a good drink and maybe a nice lady than they really are helping the world. And in a world of tabletop role-playing, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, when push comes to shove, if something bad is happening, they will try to help, but they'll also want profit. And that's how a lot of people play TTRPGs, which is totally cool. The reason I'm bringing them up in an alignment video is because both of them, to me, are key examples of law and chaos. The Grey Mouser is a former sorcerer's apprentice who becomes a thief. He spent his life living in castles and cities. He feels most comfortable in a place that is structured and lawful, even though he prefers to be a thief. He scales walls, he stabs people in the back, he steals things. But he's a character that falls in the lawful alignment because to him, the idea of structure is comforting. Fafford, on the other hand, comes from the Grey Wastes, a frozen wasteland to the far north. Fafford finds city life fun from time to time, but he really feels at home in the woods, in the mountains, in the snow. Fafford is a barbarian. Fafford doesn't like structure and order. Fafford enjoys beds and good drink, but he's just as comfortable running around in the trees and finding a bed in the snow. An example that pops up multiple times throughout the series is that Fafford loves the ocean. The randomness of the waves, the chaos of the sea, is something that he feels comfortable with. He comes from a seafaring people, people that are very heavily inspired by the Norse. Every time they're on an oceanic adventure, though, the Grey Mouser prefers to be standing on land. The chaos and the dysfunction of the water upsets him. He would rather be on the structured order of land. Because Grey Mouser is the epitome of the lawful alignment, 
and Fafhurt is the epitome of chaos. Neither of them are bad guys. Neither of them are good guys. But they are law and chaos. Now, I would be a terrible host if I didn't also give you a third example from this amazing series of books. And this will throw you for a bit of a loop, but the best example of the neutral alignment in the works of Fritz Leiber is the city of Lankmar. Now look, I hear what you're saying. That's not a person. That's a terrible example. Stop it. <laughs> Lankmar may be a city, but the amount of things that go on within its walls are hard to explain. <laughs> The different factions, the different syndicates, the different guilds that run everything from the inside. The aristocrats who barely see the other sides of town. The reason that these two characters keep finding themselves pulled back into the city is that even though it is a city and thus structured by nature, it is also chaos personified. Lankmar is a melding pot of cultures and religions and factions. Lankmar is a living, breathing character even though it's definitely not. It is structured even though it is full of chaos, and it is chaotic despite it being full of order. It is the perfect contradiction, and thus the perfect balance, to bring in these very different characters and make them a home that they both feel comfortable in. Longmar is, in so many ways, a key character in this series. Even if it is a setting. This is what I think of when I think of Law and Chaos. I think of Fafhurd, and I think of the Grey Mouser, and I think of Fritz Leiber. And there you have it. That is my personal explanation of Law versus Chaos. Uh, seriously, if you want to kind of dive more into this theory of Law and Chaos being primordial forces that are constantly at war, I do recommend checking out Matt Colville's video. He doesn't really need my recommendations because he has a huge channel, but it is a very good video. It is what inspired me to kind of look deeper into things that I was reading and things that I was watching for my own worlds. Hopefully this helps you kind of understand Law and Chaos. I know my players specifically ask me about this a lot, so having something that I can just send to them is helpful. Hopefully other judges out there who have the same opinion as me, uh, they can do the same thing. Or, or if you don't have the same opinion as me, hopefully I'm inspiring you to kind of look deeper into these ideas. Look deeper into what is laid out because a lot of it is left for interpretation on purpose because each individual should be making their own world in their own way. Even if you're using a pre-established location, a pre-established setting, you should be finding ways to tweak it and make it your own. Anyway, thank you all again for the amazing support. I absolutely love that people really seem to enjoy these videos. If you guys want to see more like it, please comment down below. Uh, you will see my personal channel, Dogface701. I, I try to comment on every comment that's down there as long as there's, you know, room for something for me to add. Now, if you guys like hearing me ramble and you want to hear me talk about things like video games, movies, or anime, you can check out my regular channel, Dogface701. Link down in the doodly-doo. And otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next video. So until next time, keep moving up that dice chain.